Last time on Lost and Found. Once again, we found ourselves stuffing our worldly possessions into our packs for another backcountry trip. (laughs) This time we are packing for a trip unlike any other we've been on. My sister-in-law, Julie, was drawn from a lottery-based system to hunt a mountain goat in a remote valley of the Kenai Peninsula. The hunt required being dropped into the backcountry by a float plane and then picked up days later with or without a goat. They asked if we wanted to tag along. It was a rare opportunity to gain access to a place that we'd otherwise have no way of getting to. Oh and because we love to spend time with them, obviously. So this is kind of all the leftover things from our refrigerator. Mm, That's good. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Celebrating our anniversary in style. Gas station burritos. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of love it though. It's so tasty and it's also very us. <laughs> Not the type of road you find in airport town, but I guess we're too. Oh, and that's climbing gear. Oh, it's climbing gear? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. We don't need that one. I'm sure. Alright, my turn. Climbing gear.
there is something special about flying in a float plane, and I think Leonardo da Vinci put it best. Once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward. For there you have been, and there you will always long to return. We spotted the lake that we'd call home for the next few days and gracefully descended towards the water for our landing. As soon as our gear was off the plane, the pilot lifted back into the sky, leaving us to our own devices. we got to work setting up our base camp. At one point, I hopped over to help Pat, my brother's friend and military colleague, to figure out how to set up his new tent, which he had been wrestling with for a while. It was reassuring to be in the presence of such accomplished and proficient military officers. We can't move that very far. <laughs> Hug now all this green. Once camp was settled, we ventured out to get the lay of the land. It's a really good, good looking body of water. Holy crap, yeah. I just want to stick a big straw in it. Just... Having been thwarted our first attempt to take out our new pack raft, Owen decided to take her out for her maiden voyage.
All right, cool. We decided to walk the lake we were camped on to get an idea of the terrain that laid down the valley. What we found left us excited to explore even deeper into this remote drainage. Eventually, we found a mountain goat high up on the mountain and spent a long time just observing it. And being wildly thankful to be able to see this rarely visited place. Owen and I walked back before the rest of the group to find a spot to take some anniversary photos. As I set up the camera, Owen and I reflected on our past anniversaries. Last year, we spent the special day summoning Tiwanot in the Tetons. This year, we were here. Owen and I have always shared a kindred spirit for adventure. But with each passing year, our dreams get bigger. And so does our ability to make those dreams a reality. With the way that things are trending, it feels like together, nothing is impossible. heavy. I like that. <laughs> hmm. It's kind of like something that wouldn't do it. Wow, that's a lot of this crystally stuff. <clears throat> There's that consistency I was looking for. Okay. So it's got like a nice moussey consistency. I can hear the crunch. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's so good. I think that booger's coming out. <laughs> oh my god, this is good! Mmm. a gunshot go off while Ohm was yawning obnoxiously loud. <laughs> uh, I heard a second one about 10 minutes later and I think, I don't think, I know we see the mountain go up on the hill and it does appear that they got it. Um, and so far all you can see is that they're trying to figure out how to get there and they haven't yet. 
Um, our mission is I'm going to paddle the pack raft to the far end of the lake, which is about a mile, 1.2 miles. And then Owen and I are wanting to continue down to the end of the valley where um, a glacier intersects. It looks rad. So we're going to try to get there today, but I'm excited. This will be my maiden voyage in the boat getting, getting across the lake. Luckily, the wind's in my favor. Oh, I see Owen. At this rate, with this wind, I feel like it's going to be really easy. Finally, after multiple miles of route finding, our destination came into view. Our progress was abruptly stopped by this drainage. After tracing the water's edge and probing the depth for well over an hour, fording the glacial fed stream was looking like more of a risk than we were willing to take on. The water was deep, moving too fast, and was wider than we felt comfortable jumping. Ultimately, we decided to turn back. Though we were disappointed, the decision came down to risk management. If anything were to happen, our only way out was via an airlift. Eric, Julie, and Pat were still high on the mountain when the weather took an unexpected turn. A fast-moving weather system moved into the valley, causing us to lose sight of the hunting party. It turned into an all-hands-on-deck effort to get everyone, all the gear, plus a goat off the mountain as the wind and driving rain came down on us. Thank goodness, it doesn't seem to be nearly as windy at camp because we have this hill to block us. So really looking forward to retrieving all that gear and coming back for the last time to camp today because this is uh, demoralizing. <laughs> oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta swap gear and I gotta head back out. Cold, tired, and in my case, soaked to the bone. It took multiple trips up and down the mountain to get everything back to camp. One thing about our tent, it's really light, but there's not a lot of room to hang out in. No. Al Pastor with cilantro lime rice. I'm excited about this. You want a beer? Yeah. Beer me. Beer you, for sure. You've earned it. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Thank there you. you go. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my gosh, this tastes so good. Beer tastes so good when you earn it. Yeah. Wild day. That day, I learned the hard way that my rain jacket was no longer waterproof. My gear failure left all of my warm layers wet, and with the storm raging outside, no way of drying them. 
I feared what the next few days would look like for me. The hunt was successful, but tough on Eric, Julie, and Pat. So they decided to stay at camp and recover. Ready? Yes. Got too high. Tell me why I'm allowed. You're allowed. <laughs> okay, I'll try again. Let me find another one. <laughs> Still wet and cold from the day before, my only option for warmth was to keep moving. Owen and I set off on our own for the day, this time heading up the valley. I was really beating myself up over the gear failure. I put a lot of care and research into our gear to prevent situations like this from ever happening. On this occasion, I really let myself down, and I could have put myself in a dangerous situation. The best I could do now was to keep my body temperature up, focus on morale, and learn from this mistake. One mile to the lake. From here? Yeah. Finally, we reached our intended destination. From our vantage point, the lake appeared to be the terminus of three glaciers. Before we left camp, using our inReach, we received a weather report that showed the following day would be our only weather window for a pickup for the foreseeable future. Even though we wanted to stay the full five days we'd planned on, we knew that we needed to take the small opening in the weather. Our trek felt as if it had been a journey through Middle Earth. We returned warmer than we had left and with tales of a place where ice and water met. I think it was like eight miles. Everything is wet. <laughs> and I have decided I need a new jacket. Our last night in the tent. I know, we're leaving early tomorrow. Apparently this area only gets 40 days of sun a year, and we've had like one and a half of them. And so our window of opportunity to be picked up here is slim, so we have to take advantage of the good day tomorrow. I don't want to leave. Yeah. It's been a good trip, though. Wet. Yes. But good. Good night. Our tentative pickup window was a few hours away. After waiting as long as possible to let our gear dry out, we got to work packing up our camp.
Once all of our gear was crammed into our packs, we waited for our float plane to come over the horizon. As the lake fell away from the plane, leaving our little slice of wet paradise behind, I couldn't help but feel like we had unfinished business out here. When we flew over the glacier, we were unable to reach two days prior. I smiled. Unfinished business leaves me hungry for more. It's fuel to my fire. next time on Lost and Found. Too big of a sip. So hot. <sighs> and just farted. Yep. Look at that man. In its rawest form. <laughs> <laughs>